Hello everybody, Teacher Sam here, and I'm here to show you the basics on how to add green screen to your online education classroom. So what I have behind me here is just a basic thin green screen that I bought on Amazon. Now you can see it's actually quite cheap. It ripped fairly easy, but it really just needs to be a solid green color or a solid color that isn't something that you find common in your wardrobe or in your props. Now I've hung this up just using push pins and I have it hanging over my regular background. So there's actually a magnetic board behind it um, it's not really needed, um, but I'm just saying that I do cover up a regular background because if for some reason there's any sort of failure in my green screen, I do like to know that I have a background behind me that is usable and um, beautiful because <laughs> I am a bit of a background fanatic. Okay, so as you can see, I have ManyCam open. Now, when you're doing green screening, um, it is really, really important to have excellent and well-balanced light. There's a couple of ways that you can achieve proper green screening with lights. The first one is to make sure you have forward facing and then lights that are coming up sometimes from underneath um, and up behind you or from the sides behind you. But I have two very big photography studio lights in front of me um, and I have daylight bulbs in each one. I could put in the links, the lights that I bought. They were only about $80, so not that expensive. I do not have any other light sources, just these two lights. And I really think that these two lights are really what makes my green screening so successful. So key number one is really good lighting. Number two, it is a computer that can handle green screening. Now, ManyCam is a processor monster. If you have ManyCam and your VIP Kid app or your company's app open, and then you have something like Google Chrome, your computer processor and RAM are going to compete for space and energy. Um, so I do have a computer with 16 gigabytes of RAM and with a processor that has over 3.3 gigahertz of processing speed. I think I used the right technical jargon. I may not have. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you have anything less, then you really might find yourself to be a little bit glitchy while many camming and potentially run into IT issues. So make sure that you do have the basics for what you need for a successful many cam. All right, so as you can see, I have ManyCam in front of me, and let me just take you quickly real, uh, let me take you where you would find uh, this chroma key or your green screening. Now, some people um, like think that they could use the backgrounds that are automatically built in ManyCam to use green screening. You cannot. You have to create your own backgrounds, and it's so easy. I will show you how to do this. But right here on the side, this is the chroma key right here. Chroma key is what you use for green screening. So if you were, um, I'm just going to put a standard background. Um, I actually have um, a princess background that's set up behind me just because I used it today in class. But what you need to do is you need to turn on this little button right here, this chroma key, okay? Um, and what I'm going to try to do is um, clear out so you can see exactly what happens. So I've turned on chroma key and now you still see me with this green screen behind me. I then have to go in and take this little dropper right here and start to click like crazy on the screen. So you can see that there is a little bit of green down here. I'm going to click and then I really like to move around. I'll lift my arms, I'll move my hair a bit and I'll try to find spaces. I did it. Now, if you do that, how freaky is that? <gasps> bugga, bugga, bugga. I clicked on a color that was too close to the color of my eyes. Oh, I think that's so weird. Look at that. So if you make an error like this, you just undo and you go again. Now, I do find that it's very funny with my hair. I like to keep my hair as close to my head as possible. And I find that the green screening makes less errors. So there we go. I'm just clicking on little areas uh, where I see that odd little color there and that cleans up. Okay, so now that's all gone and my eyeballs are back. <laughs> now the fun thing about the green screen is you can adjust your camera um, to the best angles that you want since you're, you're always just, uh, your background stays and you're the one that's centered. So I move my camera around a little bit, sometimes to find the one that is the most flattering for me. So I play with the camera after I do my green screen. Now you have a couple other features. You have something here called blur control and this controls that edging, that um, color, that difference between the, the uh, green screen and my outline. So you sometimes need to soften this up a little bit. 
And that gets rid of some of that funky little edging here. And you also have something called shrink control. Again, that's to control the edging where your green screen comes along the sides of your body. Now, if you do too much, you might find that your hair is getting cut off. Um, if I eliminate the shrink control, you can see some other areas that maybe clicking on would be helpful. Um, but additionally, I just go ahead and modify my shrink control so it looks nice and clean. So here I have a nice clean image. Sometimes if you move your fingers, around a lot. You can see it. There's a little spot here when I put my headset on, but nothing that I think that the students are going to notice. I just realized I talked as I took my headset off. Not sure how helpful that is. <laughs> All right, so let's go find some backgrounds. Well, the best source of backgrounds is simply Google. Um, and I just put my backgrounds in a file. Um, and I don't know why my file is called screenshots, but it is. And I just find things from Google. So let me just show you um, how you can find a background. Um, today, I'm going to find a background of a zoo. So I'm just going to look for zoo background. Um, it doesn't have to be backgrounds. It really could be anything, but I just want some really cute pictures. Um, so I'm going to go with this uh, picture uh, right. Well, let's see. Let's find a nice wide zoo. Oh, I think that one's really cute. I like this picture. So I have this picture of the zoo right here. Um, it does have a little watermark on it. Maybe that one's not ideal. Some of them have watermarks. So you do want to find a picture that is not overly watermarked, um, but it's really hard anyway for the students to see it. Um, we're just going to use this uh, one anyway, just because I need to pick a picture. So I'm just going to right click on it and I'm just going to save the image as, and I'm going to put it in this folder where I have all my other backgrounds. So I just saved it as zoo. Okay, so let me close that out. So now when I select my background image, I just use this drop down box. I click on custom background. And now that brings me into the folder. And in this folder, I'm going to look for the one that says zoo and I'm going to click on it. And there I am miraculously at the zoo. Now, because my lighting is so good, I really don't need to go back in again and mess around with um, clicking on other spots. Um, so I was teaching a class and it was the class on traveling with one of my students, excuse me. So um, we were traveling to different cities. We went to Disneyland. Um, we went to New York City. I was teaching the Paul Bunyan um, story to one of my students. And so I came in here and I found a couple of different pictures of Paul Bunyan. Um, right here. And so, you know, I had Paul Bunyan behind me. I do different weather and I still incorporate many of my other digital props when I green screen. Um, and sometimes I do just like to have the nice VIP kid background behind me. And this is what I generally keep with my trials. And then um, I will add the um, VIP kid uh, logo behind me also. So it's just up there and it just looks really nice and clean and professional. I really like that. Now you can have some fun uh, when you use your picture in picture uh, on your green screen. If I wanted to have, let's say a Google slide and I like to give a lot of credit to all the wonderful creators of the Google slides, um, I will go and I will open up one of my rewards on Google slides. Let's see, bookmarks, rewards. These are my favorite. I loved this pick a drink. I had some fun with this. So I will go ahead and let me just set this as a custom area here so everything looks a little bit nicer. Now as you can see I am still green screened in my picture in picture right here but I do need to go back in. I do this at the beginning before I even start teaching for the day. I go into all my different feeds and I like to make sure that that is clicked and it is nice and clean so I just need to keep clicking here so I am nice and clean in my picture and pictures. Um, and now I'll have a little bit of fun. You know, this one was cute. I got to pick a drink. So every time I was teaching my student, I went for a swim in each one of the drinks. He thought it was hysterical. So I was like, look at me, I'm swimming in the tea and I'm taking a bath in the tea <laughs> or I'm taking a bath in the hot coffee because, you know, I wake up super early and sometimes this is what I need to do. <laughs> so you can have a really good time with your green screening. Anyway, this was a quick introduction on how to use green screening with Minicam with your classrooms. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks.